A pre-primed pack factory bumper. Okay, so if it's pre-primed, you should be ready to go. Um, I would just wash it off with a good degreaser first. You could use a dish soap, wash it off really well. Uh, then you can dry sand it with 400 or wet sand it with 400 grit. And depending on the primer that they put on, I mean, if it seems like it's thick and you have some room to work with, then you could just scuff it with 400 and just paint it base coat, clear coat, uh, or single stage, whatever you're doing. I'm not sure what type of paint you're using. Um, but if you feel like you want to add a little bit more primer to it, you can add some 2K uh, filler primer to that. Two coats, give or take, sand it down flat with 400 grit, and then you should be okay. What's the best way to... to What's the best way to mix and store touch-up paint? Uh, well, if it's touch-up paint, it usually comes in a small little bottle and you usually don't mix it. It's just a, a single stage touch-up paint. So I'm not sure what you're thinking, maybe a base coat can or whatever. Um, if you're gonna be using base coat as a touch-up paint, you're gonna reduce it one-to-one, -one, just like base coat. Um, you could, you could mix a little clear on it, put some clear on it, dab it if you want. It's just it's pretty much the same process. Clear to use over a single stage. Uh, you could use any urethane clear coat. So it doesn't matter what kind of clear coat, you could use any clear coat. Um, just make sure it's a ure urethane clear coat. Okay. So you could use a cheaper brand, a more expensive brand, whatever you want to do. Mixing candy concentrates. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, if that's what you got to work with, that's fine. With the X27 low volume low pressure, I tried it this weekend and was playing with pressures for base coat. Do you still recommend 17? As I saw in an early video, it's sprayed good. Of course, absolutely. The X27 is pretty much the only gun. The X27 and X88 Adam spray guns are the only guns that I use. And I paint with them all the time. We did the Good Van project with the X27. Um, and we also did it with the, we, it was a two-tone. So I think the black I did with the X88 and the white we did with the X27. And those painting, actual paint videos are going to be coming out soon. I'm in the middle of creating the bodywork content right now. Are you talking about 17 PSI? Yeah, so when spraying base coat, you know, you could spray anywhere from 18 to 25 PSI. You know, lower, you're going to get lower atomization, but it, it depends. Sometimes if your paint is reduced down, you don't have to, you know, up your pressure that much. I would stick with the 22 to 24 for base coat. You know, you go a little bit higher. 17 is a little on the low side. I noticed with the Atom X88s, you can spray base coat um, with a little lower, like 17, 18, and it still comes out really nice. Uh, X27, I would go 23, 24, 25 PSI when spraying base coat. Okay, you can go a little bit more. Hit spots where you sand it to bare metal. What was this called? I'm sanding on my 56 Chevy. Uh, uh, well, you could use a product called Spray Max. It is an aerosol can. I think I have some in my container. It's called Spray Max. I don't have any right here. Sorry, but you, it's a, it's a two part 2k filler primer that you pop the bottom and, um, it'll, it's literally a, literally a 2k in an, in an aerosol can spray max. Look at it. Just Google it. Um, spray gun settings and techniques for a four, inch by four inch spot repair on center of door. So <clears throat> pretty much if you're going to be repairing the middle of your door, okay, like, like you're, okay, let's just show you the door. You're working on the middle of a door. Okay. Normally to do a good job, okay. Of any kind of spot repair, blending repair, whatever you're doing, you're going to do your body work repair. You're going to base coat it. Okay. And because it's the middle, it's the hardest. So, you know, I would pretty much 
try to blend it in the middle and you're not going to be doing a four by four little and just clearing this area. No way. It's not going to work out. You're going to have to clear the whole panel. Okay. You're going to have to clear the whole panel. So you're going to be blending the base wherever, wherever your, your damage was. And then you're going to clear the entire panel. So you don't have to worry about blending the clear coat and having an issue with color sanding and buffing. Okay. That's the right way to do it. <clears throat> so, um, as far as spray gun settings, it's pretty much the same settings when painting anything. You're mostly going to be uh, adjusting with your trigger as far as the blending. So I always like to keep my fluid flow 100%, okay, wide open, fan, you know, 80, 80 to 90% open. And then you're basically just controlling your fluid flow and uh, your blending with your gun here. You know, the settings pretty much stay the same. You're spraying at 25 PSI, give or take for base coat, uh, a little higher with clear coat. Um, there's different types of blend jobs for different situations. And in VIP, we cover everything. So um, I would say, don't forget, you know, I would get access to um, the Good Van project. We don't cover blending there, but if you're interested, you want to learn more, check out the VIP course at learnautobodyandpaint.com. You can get a lot of value there as well. Uh, we have a lot of VIP members that um, basically, you know, even opened up their own body shops by going through the program. So somebody asked, is, is the drivetrain original? Um, the rear end is original. Exhaust is new. Um, but as far as the motor goes, I dropped in a crate engine. Um, a couple of years ago, there's only like 900 miles on it right now. So it's a 350 uh, board out, 30 over. Got it from blueprintengines.com. Um, everything's pretty much, the whole engine's brand new. Runs great. Runs really, really good. <clears throat> An inner coat over candy before spraying the clear. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, because technically candy is your inner coat, right? Cause you're putting a base coat on your first layer candy goes on top and then your clear goes on top. So candy is an inner coat. Um, so I'm not sure what you mean by that. 500 best to do gems before or after the exterior going to remove all four doors to paint gems. Thanks. Wow. Big truck. Um, I would do the gems first. I would do the jams first, uh, mask it up and then do the body. Yep. Um, like I said, there's three ways to paint the car body, then do jams, body and jam same time or jams and then body. Um, back to 56 Beller, two door hard top, Chevy and acrylic lacquer. The top is nearly flawless. So can I scuff the top of 220 or higher than paint directly over it? Primer not required. Yeah, it depends on the paint condition. So if your paint condition is good and it doesn't seem like you're having any adhesion problems or spider webbing or flaking or cracking, if you don't see any of that, you could be safe to sand with a, you could even go uh, finer than 220 actually. Um, if you're going to, if you're going to paint directly over that, um, you could sand with like a 360. It depends on what kind of paint you're going to paint over it. Also, if you're doing a single stage, then you don't have to sand down to 400. You could finish off with like 360, 380. Okay. But um, 400 is the, the best grit to paint over. Um, especially with base coat clear coat, my van project, I got it down to like a 360 and then I had some 400 laying around. So I hit the rest of the body with 400 before I painted it. So I, you know, it's, it was pretty smoothened out. Um, so hopefully that helps you out, Gail. Inner surface pad or is, is it fine without? Um, it depends. You don't have to, if you need the extra cushion, cause you're going into like ridges you know, if you're sanding kind of like, you know, in, in like curvy areas or ridges and you need to get into like areas like that, then I would use a, I would use a uh, inner surface pad, but some, you know, some original pads, some pads are already pretty soft. So it, it really depends. 
you know, sometimes you, I would just play with it. See what you like. Put the inner surface pad on, sand with it, check it out, see how it's cutting for you, see how you like it, um, and just, you know, go with how, how you think you're feeling with it, you know, because there's no right or wrong. You don't have to use inner surface pads at all. Like, I never started using them till maybe a year or two ago. I was never really big into inner surface. It was, wasn't really a thing 20 years ago, you know. It's like a new thing. Um, but it, they're good in they're good in some situations. I actually like the neoprene ones. It's a it's a nice little gives it a nice, um, you know, not too soft but firm, but not too firm, you know, texture. Uh, uh, Keats Bloom says, "I've been using SCM High Build Primer at work after repairs before sanding to paint. It barely fills 180. What grit does the Spray Max fill? It would be nice to fill." lower grid sand scratches um sem i know their primer is a little on the thin side um i think spray max it feels a little thicker to me i think i think spray max could fill 180 but you're gonna have to give it multiple coats you know it's not gonna work in a single coat if you're looking for single coat fill i would just go with a, a regular you know type of 2k filler primer you know that comes in a gallon kit or quart kits the these primers are thick because you can also play with the reducing ratio you know you could not add reducer it's a four to one but i usually like to add a little bit of reducer to thin it out a little bit <clears throat> so that's where you could kind of play with it um the can can 2k primers normally are thin because they have to be thin because they're coming out of a small little uh nozzle tip you know it's not like you have a, a bunch of different nozzle sizes that come with the aerosol cans it's pretty much usually just one size and there are it's a fine mist spray so they have to be thin so you're gonna have to go multiple coats with sem spray max same thing but i feel spray max is a thicker um it is a thicker primer um hopefully that helps Uh, forgive me for my ignorance, but what are the benefits of a spray card? Basically, the spray card helps you, and I never, I hardly use spray cards. I just spray on the side of the panel uh, to make sure it looks good. Um, but it's just to help you get a better color match. So if you're doing like a rep spot repair and you want to get a good color match, you spray out the card and see how it looks. You know, you spray the card and then you, you put it next to the panel and you see if your mixture is good. That's all it really is coats tom razor what's up buddy long time no see uh thinking about flipping cars that need some paint body work should i look at single stage paint for that or stick with base coat clear coat systems um <clears throat> tom it depends on the vehicle condition and the repairs that you need so maybe you're going to be you know maybe you're picking up a beater truck for i'm just going to give you two examples maybe you're picking up like a, a 2005 you know, beater truck or 2010 tr beater truck, and it really needs a paint job. The whole thing needs a paint job. You might want to consider to make it easier on yourself and have less cost in materials. You might want to consider just putting a single stage paint job on it. It looks great. I mean, check out my van project that came out excellent, really, really nice. Um, it's half the time, okay, instead of doing basic clear coat. Two coats of base, two coats of clear coat. You're only going to go around the car twice. You know, half the time. You'll finish the car in half the time. Comes out great. Half the cost or less. Okay, it could be like 150 bucks for paint materials or less. Um, but if you're working on a flip that maybe it's a 2010 or 12 or, or 13 vehicle, not too old, right? And maybe just the hood needs painted. And usually, well, not usually, all cars around 2000 and 2000 and above, well, 95 and above are base coat clear coat systems. So if, if, if your, your touch up, your car needs a hood paint job, you're going to be doing a base coat clear coat on it. You know, I wouldn't be doing an enamel on a base coat clear coat job. You know what I mean? Like, so just stick with what the car is. So normally cars that you're flipping now are gonna be base coat clear coat, right? Cause you're not doing like 1970s or 80s cars and trucks. 
right? But if you're going to be doing a complete paint job on a newer one, complete, it's okay to put a single stage on it. It's cheaper, okay? Other than that, I would be sticking with base clear on touch-ups, okay? So, yeah. But, hey, you could also do a complete paint job with base with clear coat. It all depends. I've done it. <clears throat> what grit does the 1K primer fill? Uh, it depends on what type of 1K. Oh, well, 1K primer. I thought you were saying 2K. Uh, 1K fills the least. Very, very, very. I wouldn't even use 1K primer. Uh, it's crap. Um, you could spray it on and you wash it with wax and grease remover. It's going to come right off. So I, I don't recommend 1K uh, primer filler at all. Uh, but hey, if that's the only thing you got, then do it. I wouldn't use it for filling. You know, if you're going to be doing any type of filling, use a good 2K filler primer. <clears throat> then it, it cures. <clears throat> this is a good primer. Uh, Advantage 32501 high build. I used to use uh, Advantage. DTM, guys, means direct to metal. So, and this is the type of primer that I like to use. Advantage. I was using that back in Texas Car Audio. And then uh, another DTM that I have been using now is ECG. Um, it's a high build primer. And this is a D it doesn't say DTM on it, but it is a direct to metal. So you can spray directly over metal with that. Fills really good. Um, yeah. <clears throat> it's a black fox body sanded down with 800. 800 is a little too fine, buddy. I would, I would scuffing it up to 400. You don't have to be that fine when you're putting fresh paint on it. But if you want to paint over 800, it's up to you. <laughs> it's your call, bro. Well, if I were you, I would do some market research. Okay. Um, figure out the market. You know, where are you going to be buying? Where are you going to be selling? What type of cars? See if there's demand. Do some research. You know, if you find a potential classic, you know, do some research before you buy it. You know, eBay, Craigslist, Facebook. See if there's any other cars like that for sale at what price point and what condition. See, check the market out. But in my opinion, you know, classics are only going up in demand, but we are in a, in a pretty unstable marketplace right now. But I do believe collectors will always be collectors. I do believe uh, certain classic cars really have intrinsic value, you know, especially if they're original condition. So I would say before you jump in, do your research, okay? Um, I have flipped many classic cars in my day and made really, really good money. I think I overpaid for my Chevelle four year, five years ago, but I don't think so now. You know, at that time, I think I did. I paid $18,000 for this thing, um, but it's a barn find, really good condition, original interior. Um, and yes, the profit is in the buy. So just like some of the crypto videos I've been making is I ask people, when is the good time to buy something? The good time to buy something is when things are on sale, okay? You want to buy when things are on sale. You want a deal, okay? It's just like anything. Buying real estate, Donald Trump always says you make money on the buy. And that's what I learned from him early, early on. And I applied that to cars. You make money on the buy. So you make sure you get a good deal. You secure yourself a good deal. You're always going to make money. Just like with crypto, everything's crashing now. There are good deals out there, but there are a lot of bad deals out there. So you got to know what to get in to secure yourself that profit because the only thing after getting a good pro getting a good deal is having patience and flipping it if you want to flip it because it's just in, in due time you're going to get rid of it, right? You're going somebody will buy it and you will make a profit. The crypto value will go up and you might want to sell part of your position and take your initial capital out, right? It all depends. <clears throat> crazy stuff peace out guys thanks for tuning in and uh, i'll see you in my future newsletters just subscribe to my newsletters so you get my emails and uh, we'll be in touch peace out again